In the last couple of months, I've started shooting sky flats. That is to say, I don't bother with a light box at all. I just point the telescope up using the sky as natural lighting and shoot my flats. It's such a convenient way to go about shooting flats. I, I wish I thought to do this in the past. You know, before Nina, I would go out to the telescope and shoot my flats one at a time. And that meant pointing the telescope straight up, setting the light box on it and hoping a breeze didn't come by and knock it off. And then experimenting with electronic shutter speeds until I found the right positioning of the light curve. For me with flats, I prefer the light curve to be about one third from the left of the histogram. And then clicking the shutter button 40 times for the flats for each filter. Then Nina's flat wizard came along and I immediately switched to that and simply loved the tool because it did most everything for me. So my mornings became walking out to the observatory. It's not that far, it's only about 100 meters from the cottage. Though it sure feels like a lot on cold winter mornings when the snow is a meter deep and it's minus 25 C. But once again, once over there, having Nina point the telescope straight up and putting the light box on top of the telescope. But some people have always shot sky flats using the sky for natural lighting. And the way I was taught to do that was put a t-shirt in a frame to stretch it out and set the frame over the top of the telescope and then shoot your flats. I never liked that way personally, mainly because the material in t-shirts sheds bits of fiber and that can get dust on the lens. Otherwise, it's a perfectly good way to go about things. But a couple months ago, one breezy morning, when it was just too breezy to safely set the light box on top of the telescope, I just had the Nina Flat Wizard go ahead and shoot flats pointing at the open sky. And then, because the breeze didn't quit, I took my images back into the house and went ahead and processed them with those unfiltered sky flats. And they came out just fine. Later in the day, when the breeze went away, I went out with the light box and shot more flats and then processed the information using both the light box flats and the open sky flats. And I could not see a difference in the outcomes. And of course, that made sense. The open sky at dawn, the light is dim. When I shot them, the sun was still below the horizon, so the light was diffuse. And the sky, well, the sky begins from where the air touches the lens all the way to the top of the atmosphere, so it was out of focus, which worked naturally to soften the open sky flats. And ever since that day, the way I shoot flats has changed even further. It's just gotten so much more convenient. Now, from the comfort of my lab in the cottage, I can get up in the morning, leisurely make a cup of tea, go into the lab, sit down in front of the computer, get on the Nina Wizard and click the button to have it slew to Zenith and shoot the flats. I can then just tell Nina to have the telescope parked to position. Then, when I'm ready, I can walk out to the observatory, grab the external SSD with all the files all ready to go, put the cap on the telescope, close the roof, and the observatory is finished for the day. I used to plan 40 minutes to do all of that stuff before the Nina Flat Wizard, when the Nina Flat Wizard came around, I planned about five minutes, maybe 10 minutes to do all of that stuff. And now the whole process, well, if there's another clear night coming and I don't have to close the observatory roof, the whole process takes, what, five, 10 seconds, as long as it takes to grab the SSD. And maybe a minute if I also have to cap the lens and close up the roof. Sky flats are just the ultimate inconvenience. So they're easy to shoot and let's just go ahead and walk you through how to do it. As we've been talking, I've been having Nina go ahead and shoot sky flats on the screen right in front of you. On Nina, I'm in the Nina Flat Wizard. If you don't already know how to use the Flat Wizard, I have a video on that that I posted just recently. I'll link it here. If you just used a single filter during the night, you can use the single mode, otherwise use the multi mode. Toggle the switches to turn on whatever filters you use during the night and select your dynamic exposure. Don't bother with the sky flat setting. What you're going to do here is allow the dynamic exposure to determine the correct exposure time to get your light curve to whatever position on the histogram that you feel is desirable. And then it'll run the flat wizard routine. The dynamic exposure doesn't care what you're pointing at. That is to say, it doesn't care if you're pointing at a light box or the open sky. In moments, it's just going to determine the correct exposure time for each filter that you shoot flats for and then it'll run the routine and there you go, all of your flats are ready. It could not be more convenient, but there is a caveat. When you shoot open sky flats as important, you want to shoot them before the sun rises over the horizon, otherwise you might get a bit of gradient in your flats. And you also want to shoot them before the sun is too high in the sky. Otherwise, the sky may have become so bright that your camera will not be able to shoot a fast enough shutter speed to create good flats. 
You also need an even blue sky. If you have lots of scattered clouds passing in front of the telescope every few seconds, it'll change the quality of the luminosity and that'll mess with your flat shooting. Because, insofar as I can tell, once Nina actually starts shooting flats for a particular filter, it doesn't measure the histogram anymore. It will just shoot the flats till they're done. So this is best done on cloudless days or days when there are widely scattered clouds and you can be sure that the clouds aren't going to get between your telescope and the sky. On the other hand, if it's a morning with evenly spaced clouds, in other words, the whole sky is gray, you can use that just fine too. It doesn't honestly matter what color the flats are shot in, not insofar as I can tell. Because what your flat system needs is the luminance information, so what matters is the brightness of the flats. It needs to be bright enough to reveal things like dust motes and vignetting. The sky is also bright, so you may need to shoot your flats at a lower gain than what you shot your images at. And I know many of the instructions out there say keep your gain the same as what you shot your flats. I honestly don't know how that's possible 99% of the time. You know, I used to try that for ages following those instructions and I would get so frustrated with it because I have some very good cameras and they just could not get fast enough shutter speeds to shoot flats at the same gain I was using during the night. When shooting DSOs, I almost always use unit gain, and even using the light box at its dimmest setting, the camera could not get fast enough shutter speeds to shoot good flats. So with flats, I quit worrying about all that gotta keep the same gain nonsense literally years ago. And it doesn't make any difference that I have ever been able to see, none whatsoever. Go ahead and try for yourself, but it doesn't make any difference. And the final thing to be aware of is you're going to have to watch your timing. At my latitude, I find it's best to shoot flats a few minutes before sunrise, say anywhere from 15 minutes to 5 minutes, I'll start the flat routines. With the telescope pointed up, the sky has a nice even illumination, but the sky is still dim enough that your camera will be able to manage the shutter speeds necessary to shoot your flats. Further north, where the sun stays lower, you might find that you have a greater range of time to shoot flats, and further south, where the sun rises and sets faster, you may find that you have less of a window. So just watch your timing. Shoot your flats a few minutes before the sun comes up and bear in mind, a flat routine using LRGB filters takes about three to four minutes. With narrowband filters, it will take a little bit longer. So start your routine so that it will finish a few minutes before the sun comes up. And one final thing to watch for is when the flat wizard starts shooting, watch the view screen and make sure no stars are showing up in it. You'll be able to tell stars from something like a dust mote on the lens. Because as the flat wizard shoots more flats, any stars will appear to track across the screen. This is especially important if you live in an area with little to no light pollution, or if by chance brighter stars happen to be straight up over the camera. You don't want any hints of stars in your flats. Flats need to give an even lighting. While convenient, bear in mind that open sky flats need good conditions to work. So either clear blue skies, widely dispersed clouds, or a sleek gray sky. If you try to use this technique with many clouds racing across the sky creating change in cloud shadows, then you're going to want to use a light box or a light filter like the t-shirt over the lens method to make sure that the light is diffuse and even and of a steady luminosity. Other than that, open sky flats with no filter or light box involved, I think it's a great option personally. It's completely automated and incredibly convenient. You let Nina do the work of shooting the flats for you and you can collect all your flats and lights at the break of day couldn't be easier. Well, I hope that helps and thanks for watching. Now get out there and shoot the sky.